why the hell are you creating a second channel like you don't have enough to do who knows it's an adventure at this point it's interesting times for everyone Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another weekend prep video. If you are new, hi and welcome. My name is Jen. I post these videos to give you some motivation to get things done during the weekend so that you can have an easier work week. Now I realize that means different things to a lot of different people now. A lot of people are uh, working from home and so that has sort of uh, change the game I guess a little bit but I still think that uh, being prepared for the work week is a good thing so today is Saturday and what time is it it is 8 45 in the morning so we did sleep in a little bit this morning I'm gonna be making a quiche this morning it's actually a keto recipe um, for a McGriddle inspired quiche so kind of like sweet and savory with bacon so you guys will have already seen that in a keto video that I posted I can link that down below I'm excited to try this recipe. Um, how are you guys doing out there? How are you coping with all of this? This has been a week full of ups and downs for me, like I'm sure it has been for so many of you. Uh, we'll talk later in this video about that. Um, I don't have a extensive to-do list made yet for this weekend. I still kind of need to assess what I want to get done um, for the weekend. I know that I do need to go to the grocery store at least just to get a few things. I don't need a lot of things. The only thing that we've been really going out of the house for is for uh, groceries and to pick up food. We have been getting takeout once a week from a local restaurant just to support them. And then I've been going to work obviously because I work in a hospital and I am getting to work from home a little bit now but I still have to go in. And if we start to get a surge uh, of patients, we're starting to scheduled to uh, peak in terms of patients needing hospital beds within the next few weeks. Um, I will be going back to uh, patient care to take care of patients in the event that that needs to happen. So lots of things going on. Uh, I'll take you with me this weekend and we'll see what we can get done. I do need to get some cleaning done around the house and some meal prepping and planning as well. All right, so I got my bacon in the oven for the quiche and I got the crust made that is chilling in the freezer. And I want to show you guys this new waffle maker that I got. You can get this um, on Amazon. I'll link it down below. But I like this because the pans pop out and you can dishwash them. I have a waffle maker that is super old that we got for our wedding. And it's such a pain to clean. Like a huge pain to clean. Because the plates don't pop out. And so you have to like basically figure out how to wash it with the cord on and everything. Um, but this one seems to be much better. So I'm going to try that this morning to make some waffles for Connor and then any extras I'll just put in the freezer. But I had like half a box of Bisquick left that I wanted to get used up. So I'm just using the waffle recipe on the back. So in this bowl I have milk, oil, and an egg. And I'm going to whisk in two cups of buttermilk and then just cook them on the waffle iron like you normally would. So I need to plug this in. I'll probably spray it with um, non-stick spray also, but you can see that the red light's on. And then when it turns green, it's ready for the batter. All right, so here's all the waffles I ended up with. Adam actually had two, Connor had two. So the rest of these I'm just gonna freeze for later in the week. We can heat them up in the toaster. Um, I really actually like how this waffle maker worked. Um, like I said, the old one that I have is probably, it's almost 15 years old now, and it just doesn't make the waffles as crispy 
as this one did. So I can't remember how much this is, but like I said, I'll link it down below. I really like it. And of course, I obviously like that you can pop out the plates too. And then I can just throw those in the dishwasher. I'm in the process of loading the dishwasher right now. And then I have a few dishes I need to hand wash. And then of course, my quiche is taking a lot longer than I thought. So maybe we'll end up having that for lunch. So got all of my dishes that I needed to hand wash, hand wash except for this Dutch oven that I am soaking in the rack that I used for the bacon this morning. I just wanted to mention that I did find some of this Dawn Power Wash last weekend when I was at the store. Um, I think it's been hard to find for some people, but I really like it. I've been using it to kind of just soak pans and it has like a foam sort of Spray, I guess you would say and then you kind of just let it sit there and soak before you scrub it and it smells really good It's like an apple scent. So I've been liking that and then I just got today from Grove uh, my new Mrs. Myers scent. I haven't been ordering from them as much just because I have a bit of a stockpile But I did want to try the new scent and this is the fresh cut grass. It is a limited edition scent and I think only Grove has it so I did get the Hand soap, dish soap, and multi-surface spray. It smells really good, like a nice fresh spring scent. So, you know, if you guys wanna try it, treat yourself. Um, I do have, always have a coupon code from Grove down below. I think you get like a free five piece Mrs. Myers set if you use my code, if you're a first time customer. Um, I really like it and of course, I've never been so glad to stockpile soap in my life since it's been <laughs> pretty hard to get, but um, yeah, I would recommend the scent. It smells really good. I switched this out with the rose that I was previously using. All right, so I'm not gonna lie. I was kind of in a funk this week and I didn't really wanna film <laughs> uh, or really work on videos. So I only posted one video this week and that was a, um, what was it? A budget meal prep video. So you guys would have already seen that. I'll post a link down below. It was really fun to um, film and I mostly just used stuff that I had around the house. So right now I'm actually going to work on posting or getting a few videos done that I need to get posted this weekend because um, I didn't really have a chance to work on those <laughs> this week. So I'm gonna work on that right now. It's 11 o'clock. All right, so it is now three o'clock and I am at Hy-Vee. I was trying to decide where I was gonna go for groceries this weekend. Um, I really just wanted to go to one place, get all my stuff and go home. And uh, I decided to come to Hy-Vee because I do need to mail a package and you're able to do that here. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and get my stuff here. Basically the only things that I'm getting are fresh produce, dairy, and um, like cold cuts and lunch meat. That's the only things that we're going to need to get us through the rest of the week because we ate them all <laughs> um, last week. And then just some things that the kids have been snacking on frequently like Connor has been liking to eat pretzels and stuff like that and since they're home all the time now oh, it's just um it's interesting times for everyone um yeah I like I said sort of in the beginning of this video I've kind of like had some ups and downs this week um especially just with anxiety of not knowing what's going to happen um, both with my kids school and home and not necessarily home but like my kids school and work and things have been super duper stressful at work not just for me for everybody and um, I don't think I'm really gonna go into detail about that but <laughs> it's been a hard it's been a hard couple weeks for everyone I think uh, you know the teamwork that I've witnessed is really um, inspiring and um, I've of course been involved with the planning efforts in our hospital and it's um, 
it's kind of, it's kind of scary uh, when you think about it, and especially if you look at the models of prediction and how many ventilators we're going to be short and how many uh, hospital beds we're going to be short if all the predictions are correct. I'm not sure. Um, we don't currently have a shelter in place order here in Iowa. I think that we should have a shelter in place order here in Iowa. I think that most people I know are practicing social distancing um, to the point that they can, I guess. I don't know. I mean, Adam and I still have to go to work intermittently. Our kids haven't been going anywhere. Um, I'm the only one that's been going to the grocery store once a week, um, but I'm also going to work, you know, two, three, four times a week too. So I don't know. I don't know. You got to do what you can do with, with what you have and, and what you're given. And quite honestly, I can say that I feel very um, fortunate to have a job in healthcare because my um, job is secure, especially at a time like this. And so I definitely don't take that for granted. Adam's job is probably secure also. His may be less so than mine. Um, so yeah, I mean, just a lot to think about. And I know that, you know, unemployment is at an all time high and it's just very, I don't know, it's very scary right now. So anyway, I'm gonna go in here and get what I need. I'll catch up with you guys later. All right, so it's six o'clock and I just made dinner. So this is the Marry Me Chicken. I'll post the recipe down below. I haven't tasted it yet, but it looks really good. I also made some steamed broccoli and in here there's some cauliflower rice and then some mac and cheese. Here's Connor's plate. It actually looks really good. All right, so it's 11, quarter after 11. And I think the last time I spoke with you was at dinner, maybe, which by the way, that recipe for the Marry Me Chicken, five stars. Everyone liked it, kids liked it. Uh, so the only thing I've done tonight is work on my video that needs to be posted by nine o'clock tomorrow. I normally am not this late when it comes to videos, like if I'm collaborating with someone, but this past week was like, I don't wanna say it was a mess, cause it wasn't a mess, but like I had things planned to cook and then I was like not in the mood to cook after work and so we got pizza one night and got takeout one night and so anyway I had to finish the, up the rest of the recipes today and film and edit and everything so that is done my video is uploading uh well actually it's done now so I can go to bed and hopefully tomorrow I can be a little bit more productive not that I wasn't productive today but um I kind of feel like I just all I did was like work on computer stuff which is fine it's stuff that I needed to do uh, yeah, but I do want to do some meal prepping tomorrow. So anyway, I'll see you in the morning. So it is quarter after 11 and um, I got all of my computer work done that I think I need to get done <laughs> this weekend. So I was actually pretty proud of myself because I got two videos edited and posted yesterday and one edited and, edited and posted this morning. So sometimes I feel like I put off computer work just because it doesn't really feel like I'm doing anything and if I'm like getting chores done around the house it really feels like I'm getting something done. But anyway, it has to be done. I'm glad I got it done. So now I'm in the process of reviewing my to-do list for the rest of the day and I'm making some chili. Um, so let me show you that and then I'll show you what I want to get accomplished for today. 
So I have all the ingredients for chili in my freezer and pantry, and I thought it would be something good to make for kind of meal prep for the week. We'll probably eat some of it tonight because I'm gonna make baked potatoes for dinner, um, kind of like a baked potato bar. Um, but then obviously it'll make good leftovers for the rest of the week for us to be able to eat for lunches. And so in here I have two pounds of ground beef. I also chopped up an onion, a jalapeno, and five cloves of garlic. And so I just have this in my instant pot on the saute setting. And once the hamburger gets done, I'll decide whether I'm gonna drain it or not and then add all the other ingredients. I do have a dedicated instant pot chili recipe on my channel, it's pretty old. Um, but it kind of gives you the idea of how I make it, so I can link that down below if you are interested. All right, so here is my to-do list for today. Um, weekend prep video, I'm getting that done right now. I did the keto video and the pantry video. I'll link um, all these videos down below if you miss them. Uh, there's still a couple things I want to film for a collab next month, but I can push those out. I don't need to get those done today. Um, and then I still need to get my thank you notes done. In fact, I got a few more cards that I'll probably share with you later that I need to write thank you notes for. And then for cleaning, I want to clean Kira's bathroom. I need to do Adam and I's mirrors in our sinks and then clean the half bath, half bath downstairs here. Um, I don't know if I'll have time to mop the floor in the kitchen, but we'll see. And then for food prep, I need to wash all of our produce. I'm making the chili. I have a cheesecake recipe I'm gonna try. I'm not sure if I'm gonna make that today or not. And then I might make banana bread since we have a bunch of bananas to use up. All right, I'm trying to remain calm because Connor just went over in the middle of me uploading a video, got on my laptop and started searching for the Trolls movie. And now I have to start all over again. So, uh, serenity now. But anyway, uh, okay, my ground beef is all cooked along with the onions and the garlic and the jalapeno. So here's what I'm adding to the chili. I have two cans of chili beans, one can of petite diced tomatoes. This is actually my last can. I thought I had more than that, so I'm gonna have to get some more. Uh, one can of Rotel, a can of tomato sauce. I also usually put in an equal amount of water. Salt, pepper, I also add some sugar, like maybe a tablespoon or so, paprika, chili powder, and cumin, and then I'll kind of just add all that to there, um, taste it, see if it needs any more seasoning, and then I can also add more seasoning after it cooks as well. Okay, so once everything got mixed together, I actually added another can of chili beans just because I thought it needed it. So I'm gonna put the lid on, set it to the ceiling, and then I just used the bean and chili setting, and that puts it on normal pressure for 30 minutes, and that's it. So. I normally make my chili in the Instant Pot now that I have an Instant Pot rather than on the stove. So I'll just wait for this to get done. I'll probably let it do a natural pressure release for um, about 15 or 20 minutes and then we can taste it and see if it needs any more seasoning. Okay, so it is 12 o'clock and I'm heating up some soup for lunch. This is some Zupa Toscana soup that I made. Um, with cauliflower earlier in the week and then I have part of a brisket sandwich that I'm heating up in the microwave That was from a local barbecue restaurant. I need to get the clean dishes put away I need to get the dirty dishes in the dishwasher and I also need to clean my stovetop because it's gross And I need to clean up the breakfast dishes because I want to do some food prep And so I want to make sure that all of this is clean before I start that so dishwasher loaded Hand wash dishes are mostly done. It's nice outside, so we got the windows open. And I just have a few more dishes in here. I'll probably do these later, but I'm kind of gathering up all the produce that I need to get washed up for today. Um, and then I also cleaned off the top of my stove. My chili is still going. I'm gonna go upstairs and take a shower. Uh, so here's a funny story. It's 5.30 and I just took a nap <laughs> on the couch. I don't know why. Adam even made me take my temperature because uh, he thought I was sick because I never take a nap. And no, I'm not sick. I was just tired, I guess. So uh, now I have the rest of the evening, I guess, to um, get everything done that I was going to get done anyway, uh, which is basically just to prep some food in the kitchen. So that's what I'm going to work on. Let me show you the chili because that's done. So I did actually eat a bowl of this before I um, fell asleep. But anyway, it turned out good. It's a little bit thinner than I thought. It would be but especially if I freeze some of it it'll definitely thicken up once it gets heated back up 
All right, so here are the baked potatoes I'm putting in. These are pretty big, so it might take a little over an hour, but I'm gonna set the oven to 425 and put them in there. I've, oh, you know what? I need to poke holes in them. Anyway, I rub them with oil, salt, and I'm gonna poke holes in them, and I'm gonna put them in the oven until they're baked through. All right, so here is all the chili that I got out of that batch. So this one is gonna go in the refrigerator here, and we'll just eat that this week and then these will go in the freezer this is a uh, I don't know how many cups is in here I would guess maybe six or eight no uh, maybe six um, this is a container from Ikea and I just use a dry erase marker to put the date on it because then you can wipe it off when you're done with it and then these are little one cup containers that I put the rest in and these are nice if you just want to thaw a little bit out for a single serving but if you do use permanent marker on your containers you can actually get it off with an alcohol wipe um, which is what I just did on a couple of these that had like marinara sauce written on them but I keep these in the house anyway you can just get them at Walmart but I keep these for sanitizing our oral thermometers after we use them so I'm gonna get these in the freezer I'm loading the dishwasher and then I saved a little bit of the chili back to put on our baked potatoes for tonight. And then right now I am going to start on making this cheesecake recipe that I want to try. This definitely won't be ready for dessert tonight because it has to, I think it has to be refrigerated for at least a day. So in my food processor, I have some vanilla wafers, two and a half cups. I have six tablespoons of butter that I melted. So this is going to be for the crust. The recipe calls for an eight inch springform pan. And I thought I had one at one time. But all I could find was a six inch and a nine inch spring form pan. So I'm just using the nine inch. I'm sure it'll work just fine. So I buttered this with soft butter, sprinkled some flour in there, tapped it off. And then after I get the crust mixed up, I'll just pat it in there, uh, bake the crust. And then once the potatoes and pork chops are done, then I can um, start on the filling. All right, so my crust is done. It may have gotten a little bit crispy. I tried to, <laughs> some of the parts were like burnt, so I scraped them out and kind of patched it back together. Oh well, whatever. Uh, these are pork chops. We are having them with shake and bake. I'm gonna put the oven at 400 and then put those in with the potatoes. These cook for uh, 20 minutes. All right, so for the filling for the cheesecake, um, you need three eight ounce blocks of cream cheese which I put in the mixer and I'm using my whisk attachment just because it will combine everything more thoroughly one cup of sugar and one tablespoon of vanilla bean paste I've never actually used this before but I got it a couple months ago online no oh, it's not focusing um, I actually ordered it on Amazon so I can link it down below but you can see that it calls for one tablespoon which is quite a bit so I'm gonna go ahead and whip this up and then to this, you add three eggs, three quarters of a cup of sour cream, and one third of a cup of cream. All right, so here's the completed cheesecake batter. You can see, I don't know if you can see, but there's like little flecks of vanilla beans in the batter, which is looks delicious. So I'm gonna put this in the crust, and then this requires a water bath too, so I'll show you that. All right, so I have my cheesecake that's wrapped in foil, double layer of foil, and I have it in my roasting pan. So I'm just gonna pour in some hot water out of the kettle, um, and this will make a water bath for the cheesecake to bake in. Basically, you just want this to go up halfway on the sides of the cheesecake. Oh, my pork chops. All right, so here's what this setup looks like. Um, this is a Cuisinart roasting pan that I got around Thanksgiving last year, and it's been very helpful for things not only like this, but for roasting turkeys and such. So I'm gonna put this in the oven. It says to bake it at 325 for 60 to 70 minutes. All right, so here's dinner. Chili baked potatoes with cheese and 
pork chops. All right, so we're doing Kira's nails. <laughs> I actually did mine the other night and I got some questions about this on Instagram. Um, I have had good luck with this so far. It's just the UV gel nails. I think the brand is Red Carpet Nails. I ordered this from Ulta, so I'll try to find it and link it down below. I know the last time I looked, they were out of stock, um, but there's similar ones on Amazon, so I'll, I'll try to find one and link it. But I only have a few couples, a few couples, a few colors so far. So I have like a pink, a, um, kind of like a purple gray and then a red let me see your other hand Kira picked the pink so that's just kind of a light pink color and then I did the red on mine you like it you feel fancy <laughs> cheesecake is done look how beautiful that looks oh okay so this is supposed to chill in the fridge overnight um, and it says to chill it before you make the white chocolate mousse that goes on top. So I think that's probably what I'll do, or at least I'll put it in the fridge for a little while to get it cool before I make that part. All right. So I decided what I'm going to do is go ahead and make the white chocolate whipped cream or whatever. And then I can just store it in the refrigerator separately from the cheesecake until they're both cooled and then combine them. So in here I have half a cup of cream some vanilla bean paste, some vanilla extract, and a tablespoon of sugar. And I'm gonna whip this up until it starts thickening. And then in this measuring cup, I have white chocolate that I melted along with half a package of cream cheese. So I don't know how this is gonna work, but they're supposed to incorporate together to make like a mousse. So we'll see how this works. All right, so it worked. Um, I'll be curious if this sets up and kind of keeps its shape. It's not as like fluffy as regular whipped cream would be, but I think it's because obviously I mixed the cream cheese and the chocolate in there, but I tasted it and it's delicious. So I'm just gonna cover this with plastic wrap and stick it in the fridge along with the cheesecake. All right, so it's nine o'clock. And of course, since I took a nap today, I'm not gonna be, oh my face, I'm not gonna be tired tonight for a while. So uh, no fear, we have laundry to fold. So. I have a pile right here I'm working on it on the bed. I think I have another load in the dryer that needs folded too. Uh, Kira's taking a shower. Connor actually fell asleep on the couch earlier and we tried to wake him up to eat supper and he wasn't having it and now he went back to sleep on the couch so he might be up all night. Who knows? It's an adventure at this point. It's actually the following evening. I never um, closed out my video yesterday but I do want to show you the cheesecake that I made because it's delicious yes. and I would definitely... Did you like the cheesecake? Yummy! What'd you think of it? Yummy. <laughs> Connor loved it, so let me show you. It turned out really good. Pineapple dry. So definitely uh, make this recipe. It's the Cheesecake Factory Copycat Vanilla Bean Cheesecake, and it was kind of a lot of work, um, but it's really good. So as you can see, between between last night and tonight, we've, we've hammered some of it, but um, it's really good with fresh strawberries. But I'm going to put this back in the... Bridge, show us what you made for your teacher. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Connor's teacher sent him a um, the letter. He was very, he was very touched. He was very touched by it. Um, but that was super nice of her to do that. So he wanted to make her a picture and send it to her. And I said, well, well what does she like? And he said pineapples and sparkles. So we gel printed a background and gel printed the pineapple and then cut it out and then he put glitter on it. So sorry about that. So we'll have to get this packaged up and send it to her. <laughs> yep, here we go. So I was able to get all of my produce washed up that I needed to. So I had some green leaf lettuce. Um, I didn't want to chop this up yet because I think I might make BLTs for lunch tomorrow, so I'm just gonna kind of wrap this up in a paper towel and put it in the um, a Ziploc bag. I washed up my grapes. These containers are from Dollar Tree. I really like them. Um, they're just kind of neat to store like a lot of fruit in. So I washed up my grapes, washed up my apples, washed up my tomatoes. I actually have all the ingredients for BLTs, so that would be good for lunch tomorrow. Um, cherry tomatoes, and then 
the strawberries. We had some of these with the cheesecake, so I didn't quite wasn't quite able to fill up the container, but at least now all of that's done for the week. The other thing I wanted to do was to get the April calendar what? done. What? I'm not talking to you. Uh, the other thing I want to do is to get <laughs> is to get the April calendar done. So uh, obviously there's nothing really to put on the calendar because you know we don't have school and we can't do anything. Uh, so I just kind of went through and put like some fun holidays on here. So like the eighth is draw a picture of a bird day. We do have Easter, uh, National Peach Cobbler Day, World Art Day. The seventeenth is National Cheese Ball Day. The 19th is National Garlic Day. Earth Day is the 22nd. 24th is Pig in a Blanket Day. 29th is National Shrimp Scampi Day. I don't know, we might start school on the 1st. I'm not sure yet, so for sure we're out till the 30th. All right, so we're gonna debrief the old to-do list, but I wanted to share with you guys some cards I got in my P.O. box. I can't remember when I picked these up. I think late last week, maybe. Uh, this cute card is an Easter card from Candy, and I recognized her name because she's mailed me cards before, and it's very cute. It's a sloth dressed up as an Easter bunny, and it's got like flocking on it. I'll have to show that to Kira. She'll like that. And she just wrote me a note inside, and I thought it was funny because she's telling me about how she was delivering food to her mom because she's elderly and can't have visitors right now. And she said that tomorrow she was going to dress up as a flamingo to make her laugh because they've been <laughs> waving through the window, which I thought was hilarious and so sweet of her. So thank you, Candy, for that card. Comment if you're um, listening to this and tell me how the flamingo suit went. Uh, this is a pretty handmade card and it is from Stacy in California. And she actually has an Etsy shop. Um, so if you guys are looking for handmade cards, there it is. It's etsy.com slash shop slash cocominga. So if you're looking for some homemade cards, you might want to check her out. It's very pretty. I love it. So thank you very much, Stacy, um, for your sweet card and your note. You said that I do it all, but I surely do not because I will tell you what I did not get done on my to-do list this weekend. <laughs> and then lastly, I got this beautiful photo card from Celeste. And she also wrote me an awesome note, which I love her handwriting. I worry that no one else is going to be able to write in cursive anymore after our generation, which is sad, but, you know, say la vie. So thank you very much, Celeste, for your card and your sweet note. So right now I'm going to sit down and write thank you notes. I have a few other cards that I haven't got thank you notes done for yet. But here is my to-do list for the weekend. So like I said, the, the main thing I got done this weekend was just get a lot of videos posted, which uh, doesn't really make much for the way in making a video, but it's stuff that needed to be done. And then I didn't get these two things made, but I can do that this weekend or this week. I'm going to do the thank you notes now. Uh, okay, cleaning. So I did not get Kira's bathroom done or our master bath, but I did uh, get the half bath clean. I'm writing like a two-year-old downstairs. I did not get the floor mopped, but I'll do that this week. I got my produce washed. I made the chili. I made the cheesecake. Banana bread I didn't make, but the uh, bananas are still okay. I mean, they're very ripe. They're on the counter, so that's something that I can probably do um, tomorrow after work. Either make some banana bread or some banana muffins, and then I'll show you. I was doing a little bit of art therapy with Connor on Friday. We um, jelly printed all of these pieces of cardstock with acrylic paint and we did basically one eight and a half by eleven sheet for each color of the rainbow and so I cut all of these out and kind of adhered them together in the shape of a rainbow so I don't know what I'm gonna do with this. If I'm gonna put it on a scrapbook page or what I want to do but I thought it was fun to make. And then with the extra paper, I actually cut out a bunch of hearts, hand cut. So I adhered these in rainbow order to a sheet of eight and a half, or I'm sorry, 12 by 12 cardstock. So I'll probably make a scrapbook page out of this. Um, and then with the leftover hearts, I, whoops, I put these on a six by eight um, sheet of cardstock and then this here is actually um, deli paper that we use to clean off the jelly plate 
and then I just adhered the hearts on top of that. So I might make this like a double page spread in an album. Um, I have a title idea and I, this is a acrylic word from Allie Edwards that I thought re went really well with that. I don't know. I'm always obsessed with rainbow colors. So I thought that looked cool. So that is also what I did, uh, on Friday night, just basically, you know, cutting and pasting things like a five-year-old, but, um, it's always good to do stuff like that. It helps relax me and keep my mind off of things. So I wanted to also thank you for your support because I announced today that I actually created a second channel called Jen Scraps, which I'll link down below. I actually created it a couple weeks ago and I just got the chance to post a video on it. Um, and I'm sure many of you are like, why the hell are you creating a second channel? Like you don't have enough to do. Yes, I realize that but I have just been having a drive lately to create and share, and I didn't really want to do it on here on my main channel just because now I've built an audience that's so far away from that that I just felt like I didn't wanna detract from my channel by posting stuff about arts and crafts, and so I felt the best way to do it was just to make a separate channel, and those of you who are interested that in that can come visit me over there, but then the rest of you that are just interested in the cooking and things like that can just stay over here. So, uh, like I said, I'll have that link down below. Um, my goal is to just post one video on that channel a week, and then I would still, I'll still be posting three to four videos on this channel every week as well. Now I would like to get to the point where I can be on a really great schedule and do four videos a week. Um, so maybe someday I'll get there. <laughs> maybe not. I don't know. I was also going to update you guys on work and childcare and all that stuff that's been going on since I've been talking about that intermittently. So, uh, so as of now, our schools are out until April 30th. I'm quite sure we probably won't be going back to school this year at all. Um, so, Basically, the source of my stress throughout all of this has been um, childcare issues and then just like stress at work um, because of everything that's going on. And I know that um, I am not in patient care anymore, but that does not mean that my job has not been affected by this pandemic and COVID-19. And that doesn't mean that my whole department hasn't been um, basically working our tails off to make sure that we have everything in place for this um, potential surge of patients. Um, so I have been working more hours than normal. I have been working in the call center to um, basically help assess patients over the phone and decide whether they need to come in and get a test or not, or whether they need to stay home and self monitor and all of that. Um, I help a, a lot in our hospital with some, with a lot of the clinical policies. So basically um, like, even when you think about resuscitation of patients and code blue policies and CPR and all of that, all of that has to be changed when you're talking about these um, viruses that are transmitted uh, via droplet and aerosolization because anytime you intubate a patient or do CPR on a patient, um, you know, you're aerosolizing sputum and that's a risk for the healthcare workers. And so um, I've been very, very busy. <laughs> very busy at work um, helping the clinical folks get this all figured out um, but I've been glad to be a part of it uh, it's been a little bit stressful for me trying to figure out what I'm supposed to be doing on any <laughs> given day uh, kind of when this all started they said uh, we had some shortages in our department and so they basically assigned me and said you are going to be uh, the assistant for the hospital epidemiologist and anything that she needs do that and then uh, after that, then I got some news, which was actually incorrect, that I was gonna be pulled back to work on the floor very soon, and that ended up not being true. What ended up being true was that I was on a list of nurses to get pulled back to the floor if we have a surge of patients, which I knew that anyway. <laughs> and so I'll be going to training this week actually to um, relearn how to use the IV pumps because when I was on the floor, uh, we had different IV pumps. And so there's still things that, you know, I need to brush up on should I have to uh, go back to the floor and take care of patients. So I'm going to have to do that. And yeah, and then I'm also working a lot, like I said, in the COVID call center, which has been interesting. Um, 
so yeah that's kind of what's been <laughs> that's kind of what's been going on i know that this is really uh, consuming all of our lives and um, even though it's been stressful at work and i kind of feel like i've been getting pulled in a million different directions and i'm not always getting the most correct information but <laughs> as this goes along and evolves um, it seems to get less and less stressful every week so we'll see what happens um i don't know um obviously what's going to happen i hope and pray that it doesn't get as bad as they say it's going to get for us because we at our hospital have a finite number of ventilators and um it's really scary to think what would happen if um, we didn't have enough to take care of patients. It's very, very scary. So anyway, yeah, Adam is for the most part working from home. He does have to go in intermittently. And so if there's a day when he has to go in and I'm not here, I'm sorry, this is not focusing. If there's a day when he has to go in and I'm not here, um, sometimes I will just have to take the day off of work or um, take part of the day off work so he can go to work. Um, we canceled our Easter. We were going to get together with Adam's parents, but we decided to cancel that. So yeah, basically it's just um, Adam going to work when he needs to, which is usually once or twice a week. And then I have been um, alternating with another coworker to work from home half time. So like this week I'm working from home three days and then the next week I'll work from home two days, so on and so forth. And then most of the days I'm at the hospital, I'll be working in the call, in the COVID call center. So Anyway, that's my update as it pertains to all of this, but I hope that all of you guys are staying uh, well and healthy and are staying home and um, are not going out needlessly. I know that there are several states, including ours, that do not have a shelter-in-place order. I personally don't agree with that. I think we should have a shelter-in-place order. I think the governor is trying to get around that by basically shutting everything down, <laughs> um, but I don't know that that's necessarily working. So. Uh, we'll see. I think for the most part people are complying with it. Anyway, super long outro, <laughs> but uh, let me know if you have any questions and uh, yeah, we're going to carry on, carry on uh, like we always do and um, ho I hope that you guys are all doing well and are coping with everything as best you can and uh, if you have something that you'd like me to send you good thoughts for and think about you, please leave it in the comments below. I always like reading, um, you know, positive stories. And um, if you need some extra thoughts sent your way, I'd be glad to do that. So thank you for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.